Hi, I'm Pastor Aaron Jones Wade, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this worship service where we're experiencing the next level. I want to encourage you at the end of this service to leave us a comment, or more importantly, come to worship with us Sundays at 3 p.m. Have a blessed day.
each of you to our worship service. This is indeed the Lord's Day, and this is also Mother's Day. So we're celebrating Jesus, and we're celebrating the women of God, the mothers of God. Amen. If you're watching us on via YouTube or YouTube, we welcome you as well. Amen. Indeed, worship the Lord God along with us. Amen.
Father God, we just come before you now to say thank you. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to see yet another day. God, we thank you for allowing us to see another Mother's Day. God, for all of us who have mothers that are still living, God, we thank you for them. God, for those who have transitioned, we thank you for them as well. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Move like never before. God, we ask you to heal somebody, deliver somebody, encourage the body of Christ. Help us to know that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. God, in all our ways, help us to be stable. And we thank you for it now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody give God a clap of praise for God.
second part of our financial stewardship Bible study. The first part, we looked at how do you budget, how do you set things up and get things right. This Thursday, we're going to be looking at the second part of being good financial stewards. See, we talk about tithing and stuff in church, but not a lot of times do we show folks how they have to line their life up because it first starts at home and it trickles down on there how you're spending, how you're splurging. You got to look at that. And so we're looking at that in our Bible study this Thursday, 7 o'clock, right here at Howard School of Divinity. I would also just like to say, I ask everybody in this room to keep our president, the chief of chief and commander in prayer. On last week, he made a, a major announcement about his personal feelings concerning things and darts and attacks have been coming. But anybody know that the prayers of the righteous well, are much? Amen. Anybody know that justice will come down like water and righteousness like a mighty strength? That's what Michael said. Yeah, come so on, we God. thank God for our yeah. president and we ask that uh, members will keep President Barack Obama in your prayers. And at this time, I would like to make a few special tributes. Ministers, please take your posts. All the mothers in the house, all of the mothers in the house, why don't you stand to your feet all over this place? If you're a mother, if you are a mother, mother, if you are a surrogate mother, if you are an adopted mother, mother, adoptive mother, if you serve as the capacity of a mother in somebody's life. That's a young person. That may even be an older person that you've helped to groom and mentor and they call you mom. You serve as mama. Stand to your feet so that we can acknowledge you. So often women in our society and especially mothers are overlooked. We get older as young people and we get the knucklehead. We think we know it all and we forget about how mothers poured inside of us. Laid up late at night when we were not at home and prayed and cried for our well-being and our safety. We forget sometimes. So at this moment in this worship service, we want to take our hands off to you and tell you that we love you. Despite how we act up sometimes, despite how we don't do what we need to do sometimes, we love you. And if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even be here. Come on, So man. thanks be unto God for mothers. Let's give mothers a hand clap of praise.
by and by. We want to take this moment to acknowledge them. We have a white candle in our midst. We have a white candle in our midst. And as we light this candle, I want us to call out the names of mothers that have went on to be with the Lord. That's on your heart. Especially in this season, some folks reach depression places because they don't have their mothers with them. And at this time, we're just going to call on the memories, those good memories of the mothers that have gone to be with the Lord, be with the Lord. So let's call out names of mothers. Patricia Lee, Willie Lee Wade. Call them out, call them out. And just remember those happy times, those good times. Even in the spirit, we say we love you and thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for imparting wisdom. We thank the Lord for you. We like this life in memory, in commemoration of those mothers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the memories of mothers that's, that are with you, that are sitting in your bosom. We thank you, Lord, for holding them and keeping them. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to still have a piece of them with us right here. mothers that have been figures for justice. Those mothers that have been figures for righteousness. Those mothers that were trailblazers in the army of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers. Everything that they parted in us. Thank you for letting them fight a good fight. And trailblaze the way for us. God, we thank you. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. This time we would like to acknowledge special mothers. Those mothers who are over the age of 30. Why don't you stand to your feet all over this place? If you're a mother and you're over the age of 30, why don't you stand to your feet? Come on, let's give God a praise for mothers. There's something about the church. Season. Now, don't play it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, if you're a mother now and you're over 30, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so now, if you are a mother and you're over the age of 40, remain standing. Amen, amen, amen. We ain't gonna tell your age, it's all right. If you are a mother and you're over the age of 50, remain standing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for speaking. Amen. To our mother, and you're over the age of 55. Remain standing. <laughs>
offering plate here. Sean, come on up and pull it in for you. <laughs> Can we get a youth? Come on up, come on up. Jojo, come on up. Come on, run to the, come on, run to the Lord. Run to the altar. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, Sean. $20 from John Food. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. He said, I'm going to beat my mother. I'm going to give my gift on this Mother's Day. We bless the Lord for mothers in this house, y'all. It's not, it's never too long to honor mothers. My mom always taught me to give honor where honor is due. So I believe in doing that. So let's thank God once again for the mothers. At this moment, let us stand all over this building and rehearse the vision statement of our church. The Bible says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Here at the community church, we have a vision. And if you don't know it by heart, it can be found in the opening of your program. Everybody know it by heart, let's go for it. Let us begin. Our vision is to be an expression of God's love in the world. We are an inclusive and diverse church, a place of unconditional love that inspires all individuals in our community. Partnering with the Holy Spirit and the community, we are committed to fighting and eradicating social ills that oppress God's children from experiencing a fulfilled life. Amen. Y'all was fumbling on the air. I heard the fumble. I heard the fumble. Bless the Lord in this place, y'all. You may be seated. At this moment, the, children's, the children will leave for Children's Church. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for Mr. Barfield. And I have to trust these supplies because it's offering time. Sixty W D C. Sixty W D C. Often time. I think for the year has been this next level time. So with that. When we think about sacrifices that have been made on our behalf, our mothers have made sacrifices to get us to where we are. Our Lord and Savior also made sacrifices down the cross for us. Amen. So let us remember those sacrifices that have been made on our behalf as we prepare our offering at this time. Let's pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to live to see another day. God, we thank you for our mothers. For if it wasn't for our mothers, we would not be here. God, we also thank you for those who had a hand in raising us to getting us to the point where we, where we are now. Now God, we come at this time to give you our offering. We can't say thank you enough, but God, this is just a small token of our appreciation for all that you've done for us. Now God, we pray that this offering is used to glorify your name and to manifest your name and to, keep, to continue to build this church. We give this name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Zeit mit dich. Zeit mit dich. Zeit mit dich.
blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Beside the still waters, 
He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let us stop right there. And I ask that you pray with me as we explore the title, Walking Through the Valley. Yes. Walking Through the Valley. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your spirit already fresh in this place. Fresh oil, fresh wind. Have thine own way. We yield ourselves. We yield our space. We yield our place to you, oh God. And we say, do you. Hide me behind your presence and let the people hear a word from you. God, we thank you in this moment. Thank you in this hour. And we ask that it will reverberate through the West rest of our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On last week, church, we looked at the first section of Psalms, verse 1 through 3. And we noted as we explored that passage how David looked at the Lord in that passage as a shepherd. But not just any old shepherd, how he looked at Jesus as God, excuse me, as the great shepherd. And the shepherd, the great shepherd that will lead and guide you even when you don't want to be led. The great shepherd that will keep his hands on you if you would just fall back and let him do it. The shepherd that puts food on the table when you're hungry if you would simply fall back and let him do it. The shepherd that allows you to bump your head sometimes in order to get your attention and get you familiar with his voice if you would just let God do it. On last week, we learned that many of us recite this song, the 23rd Psalm, frequently, but not as many of us truly believe the words of this song. We, 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 we believe the words to be true, but we wrestle with trusting the words of this song. And on today, this Mother's Day, we take a moment to explore the second section of the 23rd Psalm, known as the fourth verse. This section of the Psalm looks at something that we all are familiar with, valleys. And mothers in this room, mothers who are watching this via you streaming YouTube, I know that you know something about valleys. I know you understand what I mean when I say we all have experienced valleys before. See, one thing I know about mothers from talking to my own mother is that they know something about valleys. See, many mothers have experienced being single parents and, and they had to rear children by themselves. They know about valleys. See, many mothers have had to deal with knucklehead little ones like myself and they have taught them to know something about valleys. Yep. See, many mothers have had to make ends meet when the money was short and the change was strange and the EBT wasn't turned on yet. Mothers know something about valleys. Many mothers can tell you if you ask them there is something about being yeah. in yeah. the valley. Oh my God. The reality is, even if you're not a mother in this room on today, I'm sure you have experienced a valley before in your life. You know what it means to be broke and not have a dime to your name. Bills are due and the landlord is knocking at your door ready to give you a pink slip. That's called a valley. You know what it feels like to get bad news from the doctor and you don't see any way out. That's called a valley. You what it felt like when everybody turned their back on you and you felt like you were the only person. That's called a valley. We all have experienced valleys one time or another in our lives. Valleys are those low places you've experienced. Those times when you couldn't see a way out. The times when mountains all around you blocked your view from seeing hope. Those times when you felt like giving up and you felt like the, the road was too hard and long. Those nights that you cried yourself to sleep in pain and fear. Those moments are called valleys. If 
we're honest, Jasmine, some people in this room right now are in valley situations. Yeah. If you just look at your neighbor for a moment, I know they look cute, they look, they look like a doll, they're dressed up to the teeth, their hair is done, they look good. But guess what? Somebody in this room is experiencing a valley right now as I preach. Valley moments, valley moments are real moments. Valley moments. You, when we're in the valley, sometimes we like to cover ourselves up so folks don't know we're in the valley. But valleys are real. They're real. See, there are several types of valleys that exist. The first valley, valleys that are caused by things of the past. Valleys that were shaped by things from the past. So we learn through science that glaciers helped to form valleys. That's that ice that was there during the dinosaur age that supposedly killed the dinosaurs. It was there and as it receded, it pulled back and carved out low places in between two high places and it was known as a valley. Well, somebody in this room knows something about valleys that were shaped by things from your past. Yeah. You know about the valleys from the choices that you made in the past and you're living in that valley. You that mama tried to give you and now you're living in that valley. You turned with the walk with the crowd instead of listening to the wisdom that was at hand and now you're dealing with the valley that you have to go through. You were too grown. You wanted to be grown and fast and now you have to deal with the valley of being grown and fast. As a result, some of our lives are us dealing with those valleys because we made some bad choices from the past. But there are other types of valleys. Come on, Minister. Those valleys, these valleys that I'm going to speak about are man-made valleys. Those valleys that humans carve out with our technology and our equipment. The valleys that humans set up for our own purposes to make highways and byways to get to places faster so that we don't have to go around the mountain, we can go through the mountain, through valleys. Somebody in this room knows something about these type of valleys. Those that were carved out in your life by folks who you allowed to have access to your life. Not too long ago, Minister Byron preached about access. Granted, well, there's some people that should not have access to your life. Life that didn't value it, valleys. Those persons who forced their way into your life and you didn't invite them, valleys. Those persons you try to get rid of, but you keep on answering the phone every time they call, valleys. Some of y'all know about these type of valleys. Some of these persons have yielded, you have yielded to, and they have made man made valleys in your life. They came and they created low places in your life. You know about these valleys. Some others know about these valleys. Those children who you prayed and laid before the Lord invested so much in, they decide to go and do their own thing and run and make a mess and now there's a low place in your life. Valleys, low place in your heart. Valleys. Well, I want you to know that regardless of what caused the valley in your life, there are things you must do in order to survive the valley experience. See, when you're in a valley, the first thing you need to know is that you don't stop in the valley. You don't stop and pitch a tent in the valley. You got to keep on going through when you're in the valley. If you're taking notes, the first point is you don't stop in the valley. You keep going through the valley. No, what does that mean? That means don't get tired and want to take a break while you're in the valley. That means don't get hopeless and decide to throw in the towel while you're in the valley. That means just keep on going through the valley. See, the key here is you have to realize the, the phrase that I'm saying. You have to go through the valley. When you're going through some things, we get a little distracted and we think we need to pitch tents. You got to go through the valley. That means don't stop. That means don't get weary. That means keep going. Get on out of the valley. Go through the valley. See, when we go through things, it's a natural inclination to feel like you're stuck in it. 
Whatever you're going through, just think for a moment how you feel like, oh, this is never going to end. I'm never going to get out of this. My back is up against the wall and I can't make it. When you're going through, you feel stuck in it. But there's nothing less. Even when you're in the valley, you feel stuck in it. You feel pops. Feel stuck in it. And, and, and it's right then that you begin to feel like you want to throw in the towel. Well, Reverend Jones taught me this. We all have feelings. But feelings are not facts. Come on. We all have feelings. But guess what? Your feelings are not facts. Despite how you feel, I want you to know that it's important for you to keep going. Despite what your limit scene is, I need you to know that it's important for you to keep going. Despite what you can feel in the moment, it's important for you to keep going through the valley. I feel this way. They hurt my feelings. In this way. Well, despite what you're feeling, you better get up and keep on going. Don't pitch no tip right here. This ain't the time to get stuck on stupid. Keep on moving through the crowd. You gotta bring all that. You gotta know that the key to survival in the valley is to keep on going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep on moving. Now, I hear somebody saying, Pastor, what do you mean by don't stop? Uh, Pastor, you're not going through what I'm going through. You're not dealing with the pain I have to deal with in this valley. How can you tell me not to stop? I feel like I'm about to give up. How are you telling me not to stop? Pastor, it's easy for you to say that. It's easy when you when you got a bull. It's easy for you to say that when you got a shelter. It's easy for you to say that when you got a job. But I'm going through this valley. Through 
the valley. It's important to pay attention to the language that the psalm writer uses at this point. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. It's important that you know when you go through that you need to only walk through the valleys. See, too often, when we're in valley situations, we want to run through the valley. Too often when we're in the valley situations, we want to quickly get out of the valley. Well, I want you to know that there's something about walking through the valleys. When you walk through the valley, instead of running through the valley, it minimizes your chances of having to go back through that same valley again. You will 
spot a beautiful lily growing in the midst of thorns and thistles in your valley. See, lilies are sweet and strong in its fragrance. Lilies are beautiful to the eye. Lilies that grow in the valley are even believed to have healing qualities. I want you to know that there's something about the lilies in the valley. See, when, when times get rough and things get hard while you're in the valley, all you have to do is slow down and look for the lilies in the valley. They will bring you hope. They will bring you peace. Just stop and look for the lilies in the valley. See, 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 when, you, when you're going through, sometimes you got to say, wait, where's the lily? And you'll find joy. You'll find some hope. You'll find a way out if you just look for the lilies in the valley. Somebody wondered why the songwriter says that he will not fear. It's because the lilies, the lilies that are in the valley reminds the songwriter that God is with him. Even in the dry place of the valley, even in the dark place of the valley, the lily represents hope. The lily, despite no other grief, the lily said that it is possible that this too will pass. Is a reminder that God is with him. Somebody needs to begin to spot the lilies oh in your valley. You felt like it was all over. You felt like you looked all around. But wait, there's a lily right there in your valley. The kids have worn you out. They got on your last nerve. You feel like saying, I'm going in the towel. I'm running away to get away from all this. Wait, there's a lily in your valley. You don't know what else to do. You don't know what else to say. You tried all. You gave it your all. But wait.
and the praise for the life of Minister Denise Kirkland King, oh God. We thank you for how you're using her in the vineyard. We thank you for how you're taking her higher, oh God, despite, in spite, but because of. We thank you, Lord, for leaving your hands on her, for laying your hands on her, oh God. We ask right now that you would anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, oh God. Order her steps in your word, Lord Jesus. Where she travels, oh God, let there be protection. Where she tread, oh God, let your peace go. Let your spirit go before her. Make easy and successful the way, oh God. Lord, as she goes to minister, Lord, go before her. Make easy and successful the world, Lord Jesus. Lord, those who are traveling with her, let the let their anointing be there, oh God, because of the spirit that's with her, oh God. And the spirit that's on them, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would be every need that they come in contact with, oh God. Lord, touch and heal through their ministry. Lord, we thank you for the mission work that you will do in Haiti. Oh God, we thank you for using the vessels that are going. And we bless your name, protect and keep them, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the whole church in agreement says, Amen. Bless the Lord in this place, somebody, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Today, on today, on today, Brother Joseph Reed have connected with this church. You see, Joseph, come around. Since the beginning, actually, 2010, Joseph has been coming to the church. We thank God for you making your full commitment on today. Somebody give God a hand. I know that the school year has just ended. Joseph is a student at Howard University. And I, I know that you feel a sense of relief since the school year has ended, right? Let's just also pray for Joseph right now. That the Lord will cover and keep him. That the Lord will go before him to make easy and successful his way.
Thomas Mann.